Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I am back from Worldcon. I am also still crashing after Worldcon, but gotta film the stuff while I can. So I am back from the 77th World Science Fiction Convention in Dublin, Ireland. I was in Dublin for seven days and I was at the convention for like three solid days and then kind of a little bit after that. Um, I enjoyed myself immensely. It was the first time that I ever traveled abroad outside of the country and so far away from home and it was totally, totally worth it. I had a lot of fun, met a lot of great people. I'm going to forget things that I did and people that I met and so please forgive me in advance for these lapses. I did not take very good notes while I was there but hopefully my outline of things will keep me going today uh, so I don't forget too many things. This video is going to be me recounting all the things that I did in Dublin and at the convention and I will do a separate video where I just talk about the books that I got. So I'm not going to talk about the bookstores and some of the dealers room stuff in this video. I'll talk about that in the book haul because some of you guys probably don't care about the knickknacks that I bought and all the yarn that I bought. If you just want the books, that video is coming soon. The first day of this trip was the 13th for me. That was the day that I flew out and I had a really, really long layover in Charlotte and eventually met up with Brie from Brie Reads Books and we were on the same transatlantic flight together. I am so, so glad I have a good travel buddy like Brie. I actually quite enjoyed the trip out and even that like six, seven hour flight because I had somebody there with me and I'm much calmer. Uh, you know, in airports and, and stuff with other people. So that was wonderful. Thank you so much to Brie for just supporting me. Uh, by the time that we arrived in Dublin, it was like 7 a.m. local time, and we could not check into our hotel. So we just kind of we're gonna bum around town for a while and check some things out, kind of scope out where things were and wait for people to arrive. Um, all of my roommates arrived on the first day, so I came with Brie, then Andrea arrived, uh, Claire and Rhea. So Brie and I were alone for most of the day. We went to Hodges Figus, which is the really cool bookstore that somebody, probably Finbar, recommended to me on Twitter. Um, I'll talk more about that in the book haul. Um, we also scoped out This Is Knit, which is one of the yarn stores that I wanted to go to. I did not get, get stuff there on the first day, but we went back the next day and I'll talk about that in a moment. The next day on the 14th was the day before the convention started, but registration was open. So a whole group of us went to the convention center to register and got our badges. Um, one of the funnest things that I got this year is this Con Coven badge. Um, this is a badge that Rhea made for us. I don't know if you can really see that or not. Uh, she 3D printed these and then hand painted them for like the uh, the galaxy effect. So me and all my roommates had Con Coven badges and that's like, it's so cool guys. <laughs> I felt like we were a little family after after all the time we spent together. Um, so let me quickly show you my ribbon since I have my badge here. If you don't know, um, collecting ribbons to put on the bottom of your badge is quite a tradition at Worldcon. It's not specifically a Worldcon only thing. I know other conventions do it as well, but it's a pretty big deal at Worldcon. Booktube SFF, us SFF booktubers there, we had our own ribbons. So we have this red one, which just say it just says Booktube SFF. We also have this white one. My favorite one is the red, but everybody really enjoyed the white one. Um, these two were both designed by Rhea. Her channel is The Book Finch. She did a fantastic job. Everybody loved the ribbons. Um, I also got a feminist ribbon. I can't remember who was giving this out. People kept asking us, oh, where did you get the feminist ribbons? And I could never remember her name, um, but they were really popular. Um, went by the like um, Worldcon bid stuff, the site selection and everything, got ribbons. Glasgow has put in a bid for 2024, so I got their ribbon. Um, Chicago and 2022. I got a New Zealand ribbon again. Yes, I'm going to New Zealand next year. I got an I Voted ribbon because I voted in site selection for DC in 2021. <laughs> and then 
My favorite ribbon is this black one. It says, I find your lack of yarn disturbing. This is one that Claire got from a friend, and when I saw that she had it, I badgered her mercilessly for a couple of days until she tracked down another one to give me. So thank you very much, Claire. I still have no clue who was giving them out, but I have one and that's all that matters right now. And then my last one is this Rebuilding Tomorrow ribbon, which is from the 12th Planet Press table. Also, they were handing out pronoun stickers at registration this year. There's a little um, space on the badge just for that, which was amazing. I hope that more um, world cons in the future continue to do pronoun stickers at registration. So many people want them, and some people were bringing their own because they didn't know that uh, there were going to be any at world cons, so that was good. So after we went to registration, uh, we had got a whole group of booktube people together and we went on a shopping trip and kind of just walking through Dublin and going to some places. I feel like I may have kind of dragged the group around on an excursion of places that I wanted to go to. This is mainly because I was the one who fired up Google Maps and took us around to everything. <laughs> But people wanted to go to the bookstores anyway, and hopefully the, the gentlemen in the group didn't seem to mind going to the yarn stores very much, but I thought this was hilarious. The first two places we went on our shopping trip were the yarn stores. Oh, I had so much fun, guys. Uh, so the first place was called The Constant Knitter. I didn't know anything about it, but it was kind of on the way, and I thought, why not? It was really, really lovely. They had a ton of hand-dyed yarn. The first thing that I picked up there, though, is this stuff. It is very shiny, metallic yarn. This is um, Katya Air Lux. So this was just an impulse purchase. They were really, really pretty. And I've already started working with it. Um, I am making this, if you look at that up close. Um, this is the Dotty Cowl by Lena Fedotova, I believe is her name. She's Ravliki on Instagram. Um, this is reversible because it is a double layer actually. So you have two different sides. You can pick and choose what you want to wear. Um, I will link the pattern down below if you're interested in it. So that was my first yarn purchase. Not too bad so far, but then I just went crazy. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody there was laughing at me because I was just so intense about it. Um, so at the Constant Knitter, I got my green yarn. If you watched my uh, Going to World Con video, my previous one, I talked about how I was making a sweater. Uh, I was making mock-ups for an eventual real nice sweater with fancy Irish yarn. And I was gonna specifically look for green yarn. Now I did finish that second version I was making, the short sleeve version of that sweater. I don't have it with me right now, it's in the wash. I did finish it at the convention and I wore it on one of the days too and it was really great. But I did get green yarn. I got lots of green yarn. Um, so the darker yarn, which is kind of my contrasting color for my plan, this label says Greta and the Fibers and the colorway on this one is Martinet. This was really pretty. And the other color that I got, I got three of these as like the main color, so I needed a bit more of this. This is Comora Yarns and Fibers from Waterford, Ireland. And the colorway is at, wait, I can't read that. I can't read this, it's, um, oh, at the bog. Okay, <laughs> sorry, it's handwritten. Um, after that, we went back to uh, This Is Knit, which is the yarn store that Brie and I had scoped out on the first day. Yes, I valiantly didn't buy stuff the first day. I waited to come back. Um, and I wanted to get yarn for a really nice shawl. So I knew that I wanted to make the Waru shawl by Addie Day Designs. She's the same designer who did the um, sweater that I'm making for with the green yarn. Um, I love this shawl, it's so pretty, and I needed four colors, like one skein each of each color that matched. So I actually ended up finding this yarn first, and it's mostly gray, it's got a bit of orange, like a very burnt look to it. This is um, Olan, hand dyed in Ireland, and um, I think the colorway is rock, but I cannot actually read that. Anyway, I really love this, so I ended up going with kind of a purple and oranges color scheme. So these are the four for the shawl, though I'm actually 
gonna take this one out. Um, I freaking love this color. It is so beautiful. This is um, townhouse yarns in spiced plum, but this is a slightly different yarn. It's slightly finer and it is 30% silk, whereas these are 80% um, merino, 20% nylon. These are sock yarns. So I could make this work, but skipping ahead a little bit, uh, there was a yarn dyer at the convention, um, Third Vault Yarns. So I knew she was going to be there and she sold out almost all of her yarn in a couple of hours, as far as I can tell. So I missed the um, convention specific colorway that she brought with her. It all sold out before I got there. But I got two skeins of beautiful yarn from Third Vault Yarn. Um, so I have this one, which is more my color, very more on the purple side of things too, but um, really, really beautiful. This one is called Desire, and it is 100% superwash merino. No idea what I will use it for, but it is so, so nice. And then I picked up this one as well. This one is called Mount Doom. Um, and this I'm going to probably substitute into my shawl like that. It's not as vibrant um, and orangey as this one, um, the Spiced Plum, but it is um, basically exactly the same type of yarn, so the weight of it will work out a little bit. And then after that, we went over to see the Book of Kells and tour the like Trinity College Old Library. I loved the Book of Kells exhibit where they had all the information and the big photographs and, and close-ups of the artwork and the calligraphy and everything. I love that part of the exhibit. The actual Book of Kells, I barely got to see. There were so many people, I never actually got close enough to the display to really see the actual book. Oh well, you know, it is, it is what it is and there were so many tourists there. The library was surreal. Even though I was there, like I was standing there and it still felt like I really wasn't there. It felt like I was still looking at pictures, but it was real. Yeah, it was, it was amazing. It was absolutely stunning inside of the library. And once again, I wish I could have spent more time there, but there were so many people there. You had to keep moving on. And I went crazy in the gift shop, <laughs> as you do. Um, I got earrings. I haven't worn these yet, but they are so pretty. Um, I just, I love the shape of these in particular. I thought it was really funny that most of the stuff in the library and in the Book of Kells are very earth tones, oranges, yellows, reds and stuff, and all the jewelry in the gift shop was silver. Maybe it's an Irish thing. I usually don't buy silver jewelry these days. It's not, it's not really my metal. I bought scarves, so I bought this scarf which is so pretty this is my color guys this is my favorite color in the world um i think i actually got the teal version of this at a different gift shop for my mother which is also a beautiful color but this this is my color um i just i had to i couldn't pass it up because of the color and probably one of my favorite purchases that i made the entire time i was there is this yay <laughs> This is a gigantic, very like silky scarf. It's very sheer and it is um, like the design is based on calligraphy from the Book of Kells. It is so beautiful. I didn't own anything like this before so I thought it would be a really cool addition to my wardrobe. Um, it's so neat, guys. <laughs> it is also way too hot and muggy here right now to be wearing scarves but um, yeah, that's why I'm kind of red. I'm hot. <laughs> So yeah, that was the Book of Kells, um, Trinity College Library and all of that. Um, and then that day, was it that day? Yeah, we had we got together like all of the booktubers who had arrived because pretty much everybody had arrived by that point. And we went out and had a big dinner at a pizza place. And I got to meet Elizabeth from Books and Pieces for the first time, Caitlin for the first time, um, Shannon and Sush from That So Po were also there. I'm so glad they made it. I think everybody agreed Shannon and Sush 
were the best people ever. They were so lovely. I am so, so happy that they were able to come. Shannon's channel is pretty new. She just started booktubing this year and you should definitely check her out. Like she makes great videos, but also she is a truly wonderful human being and I appreciated all of her work in organizing things while we were there that was immensely helpful and made me feel much less stressed. <laughs> The 15th was the first day of the convention, and this is when we basically all discovered that the convention center was too small for the convention. Like, there were five and a half thousand people, like, physically attending the convention by, by the time the last stats came out, and I believe that they said they basically hit capacity on the convention center. So I missed a good half of the stuff that I wanted to go see because either I just couldn't deal with the queues anymore, or I decided to just leave the convention altogether for like a day or a morning or whatever. I did see a couple of things, like I saw the Joe Walton reading on the first day. Really happy I made it to her reading because she read from her next book, which is coming out in July 2020. It's called So What You Will, and the premise of it sounds slightly bonkers and very meta, but also fascinating. I am so interested in reading that book now. The reading was great. Um, also on the first day, I made it to the Ellen Kushner reading, which was great. It wasn't that crowded either, which was really helpful. It was quite late in the day, and I think that was part of the reason why not as many people were there. She read from the sequel to The Privilege of the Sword, which is probably my favorite of the Riverside novels. But yeah, I set like 10 or 15 years after The Privilege of the Sword, and she read a chunk from the middle of it, and it was so good. I want that book so badly. I had no idea she was writing it, and I'm so hyped up now. No clue if or when the book will ever be published, but I will be salivating for it until it comes out, you know? Um, so that was really great. Oh, that was also the day that I went to the dealer's room to get stuff. So I will show you some of that stuff now. One of my favorite purchases, um, near the, the end of the convention, I went to the dealer's room looking for this ring. And if you could see that, this particular artist, um, I believe her shop is called Viltog. Um, I didn't get a chance to really talk to the artist when I bought this, so I'm not entirely sure on how you pronounce this or where she was from, but she had some great jewelry. It was a toss-up between this ring and the tentacle, like octopus tentacle earrings. I wanted them both so badly, but I only let myself get one thing. Uh, but she had a couple of pieces that were basically mushroom jewelry, like fungi, and this is the ring that I was just obsessed with. I'm so happy that I got it. I've been wearing it a lot. Then I got, I think this is like a Lovecraftian Cthulhu Shoggoth necklace. Um, that's what the lady told me when I got it. This is um, a lady who did wire wrapped jewelry. Um, I don't care if it is actually a Shoggoth or not. Um, I looked at it and was just extremely taken with the color and the texture of it was so cool to touch. But all I can think when I look at this necklace is that it reminds me of the description of what the cherubim prognoskis, his name, the, what he looks like in one of the Wrinkle in Time novels by Madeline Langle. Um, I particularly love that character, and if you've ever seen some of the covers of that novel that try to illustrate what the cherubim looks like, it just really reminds me of this necklace. So yeah, technically it's a Shoggoth, in my head, it is um, a cherubim. I, I really, really enjoy this, and it is green. I found green things in Ireland, guys. At this point, all the days start to blend together, and I did a bunch of stuff, and I can't exactly remember what order I did some things in, but I got to go to Dublinia, which was like a medieval Viking history of Dublin museum. It was connected to Christchurch, which I regret not going on the Christchurch tour should have made time for that. I know Paul went to that. He said it was amazing. Uh, so we actually got to go from Dub the Dublinia Museum over like across the walkway over to Christchurch and then up the tower. And that was really neat. It wasn't a very tall tower. I did climb to the top of O'Connolly Tower and Glasnevin Cemetery though. We went on the tour of that cemetery and it was really interesting. A lot of history of, um, the Irish Civil War and their um, fight for independence and stuff like that. We had a great tour 
tour guide at um, Glasnevin Cemetery. He made it really, really interesting. Um, what else did we do? We went to um, the Bram Stoker exhibit at the Marsh Library. Fantastic timing. They had like a discount going on, so it was pretty much free to just walk in and see some really interesting stuff. They had an exhibit of all of the books that Bram Stoker checked out of that library when he was visiting some years before he wrote Dracula. So that was Andrea's idea to go there, and I'm really glad we went because it was beautiful. And just, um, like the, the garden entryway up into the Marsh Library was so picturesque. We took a lot of pictures there. And then I think the last thing to really talk about at the convention is obviously the Hugo Awards. We went to the ceremony, the big group of us, I think there's a picture of all of us who went to the ceremony that um, Stephen took. Um, so I'll try to get a copy of that and put it up. I don't actually have that many thoughts on the shortlist or on the winners. You may have noticed I haven't actually talked about the Hugo Awards that much this past year. Everything that won I felt was quite worthy though. I wasn't um, upset about anything, let's say. I was mainly super, super thrilled that the Calculating Stars won Best Novel. I knew it was going to happen when Dr. Jeanette Epps came out on stage. Like, of course the ceremony organizers got a real female astronaut to present the Hugo Award to Kowal. Like that was just perfect. It was it was so good. The other thing of note is that I made it to the long list again in the fan cast category, which was really unexpected. I did not think that was going to happen again. So thank you to everybody who nominated me and got me on the long list again. Um, that was fun, but also I was so excited because Elizabeth from Books and Pieces also made the long list, which is so overdue, guys. She deserves it so much. I personally have been nominating Elizabeth for like four years now. <laughs> so finally, finally. Did I mention the booktube panel? Did I skip right past that? Oh yeah, we had a panel about booktube on the program this year. Um, Brie was on that, Thomas, Linnea, and Claire, and they did a great job. You know, for the first ever panel we've had on the subject of, of our little community, it really had to be a lot of the basics. A lot of people who came to it had no idea what booktube was. Um, so it was really great to go to that, and that was the day that I met a lot of people. People came up and said hi to me. Um, I got to meet Suzanne. Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne. I actually ran into her multiple times at the convention. It was lovely. Every time to see her, I was like, oh, I, I know who you are. Familiar face. Um, I finally got to meet Mark in person after years of talking online. Got to meet him, got to give him a hug. Um, some other people as well. I, I don't remember everybody's names, and I'm really sorry about that. I do remember Jack, though. Thank you for coming up and say hi to me. I hope you do leave me a comment someday. So yeah, I know I'm forgetting tons of people and I'm sorry about that, but it does become a bit of a blur after a couple of days of like all the intense stuff happening. And I think that the last thing I have to talk about is that the, the very last day I was in Ireland on the 19th, I think, um, I went on a hike of the Hoth Peninsula with Joe and Paul and Andrea, and that was so fun. It was also a little bit grueling. It was a four hour hike and it was not a beginner level, let's say. Uh, so it was pretty difficult in places, but the views were worth it. It was so, so gorgeous. And the tour guides were amazing, just really lovely, kind people. And I enjoyed every minute of it, even when I was dying on the final hike up to the summit. Um, and I was exhausted after that. Um, I think Paul said that we walked 10 miles that day in about four hours. <laughs> so, wow. Um, it was really, really good fun. Um, and, you know, we kind of ended that day. I was so dead, uh, but we had a big goodbye dinner with all the um, booktubers who were still in town. I think there were about 13 of us. Thank you so much to Shannon for arranging that. There were a bunch of us who were gone during that day, like on the hike and stuff, and she made reservations for us at the Thai place, and it was so, so good. And then, then I had to come home. I am very glad that I went and surprised that I handled it a lot better than I thought it was going to. Like I said before, I have travel anxiety and I'd never been out of the country before and I felt like this was a really good trip to kind of boost my confidence that I can do these things. I feel like I can actually make it to New Zealand next year. Um, the travel will be much longer, but I kind of know a bit better what to expect now and that's that's good. So. Wow, yeah, I probably missed something, but that's enough rambling from me. 
it was a great vacation. I really enjoyed it. Can't wait for the next one. And yes, if you are looking for the books, the next video will be the Worldcon book haul. And yeah, let me know if you also went to Worldcon. What were your experiences? What did you enjoy doing? Leave me a comment down below. And I will talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.